you said that you had a boob adventure or you described oh, it as God, your boob yes. adventure. So please, please take us take through us on this the middle journey. earth of boobdom. <laughs> you know? So um, I started off with C's. Mm-hmm. Uh, excuse me. My original boobs were like an A minus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you probably have bigger boobs than I had. Oh, well. I seriously had very small boobs. Okay. And so I started, I had to start off slow, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was not an intention of mine to go this big mm-hmm. ever. I just eventually evolved. Yeah. You know? Um, so the boob adventure, when I first started, I did silicone. Okay. Love the look and feel of silicone. Nobody could tell I had fake boobs. Mm-hmm. They were beautiful. Beautiful job. And... I gradually got bigger and bigger and bigger because, you know, my body probably was getting bigger too. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I like big boobs. I yeah. do. I, I I really like boobs on women. Uh, big boobs. Don't get me wrong. I play with the little ones too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I appreciate all boobs. Yeah. But I like big but boobs. Hu- yeah. yeah. Huge, there's something about huge yes. boobs that are... It's just like, ding! <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I understand completely. Yes. <laughs> um. So I gradually got bigger and bigger, and I ended up, you know, shooting in the industry, as you know, and I don't know if it was maybe somebody, like, I've done some Dom stuff where they've wrapped a uh, rope around them and got them real tight. Oh, yeah, yeah. But somehow this one, my right side, ruptured. Oh, okay. So I had gel all over. Mm. Yeah. So I went in to get a size change. And the doctor, when I came out, he was like, good God, it was all the way, like, leeching in the back. You know, we had to dig out gel from back there. Wow. And I'm like, holy shit, good thing I came in, you know, (laughs) for a boob change. Yeah. Um, What I didn't know is, you know what a capsule is, right? I think so, but if you So you have your implant and you create the pocket. Mm -hmm. When you create a pocket and you implant something fake— something not the body. Yeah. The body says, what is this? It, mm. And it builds kind of along the lines of an oyster, okay. building building a pearl, right? Interesting. Okay. It says, I don't like this, so I'm going to coat it. Mm. And I'm going to coat it with scar tissue. Okay. In a regular person, that, that coating is called the capsule. Mm-hmm. And the capsule is thin and even all the way. So it should look a lot like a sheet covering mm-hmm. the implant. <clears throat> Other people might might have problems, and then they have encapsulation, which is or uh, capsule contracture, mm-hmm. when the capsule starts to tighten and it tightens around the implant, and then it looks funny. Yeah, so they have to have the cap the capsule cut. Yeah. So nobody told me that my capsule absorbed the silicone. Okay. So. When they when they cut me, they cut at the nipple and they tuck in. Sorry, (laughs) it'll be constant. Yeah. Um. So they cut at the nipple. They pop the old implant out and they tuck the new one in. You would think that they would see the capsule in there, and gosh, that one looks like nan bread as opposed to a thin, even sheet. Yeah. And they had to look different. Mm-hmm. You would have thought that someone somewhere down the line would have said, that one's weird. Yeah, that one's, <laughs> there's something not right there. <clears throat> so I started having all these symptoms from silicone poisoning. Yeah, yeah. And had no clue, right? And I, I, I kept living life, whatever, and then I decided I wanted to go big. I thought I wanted to go big, but I wasn't sure how big. Mm. So I got the um, expanders. Okay. So if you don't know what expanders are, expanders, they were created for people with mastectomies. Okay. And they stretch the skin. So they put a, a regular implant in that has a, a, a feed yeah. that goes to a port. And yeah. the port, my ports were right here. That's why I have like little scars right here. Oh, okay. Um, so my ports were right there. And then you take a syringe you clean off your port mm-hmm. and you inject into the port and you can fill your boobs up. Yes. And the point of that is you go slow mm-hmm. and then you gradually get bigger and your skin has time to react 
Yeah. And then you can, the beauty of it, you can go big and then you can say, oh, wait a minute, this is a little too big. And then you can take out too. Yeah. So that's the beauty of, of, of expanders. Yeah, I've had I've had some people on the show that, that had expanders. Had expanders. Yeah, mm-hmm. there was one guest I had that she had she had four thousand cc's Ooh. each side, and <laughs> she, she was talking about I think how you know in the beginning she started expanding like by I, I don't know by a lot, and then as they but as that happened she started kind of reducing how much she and now she's only doing it like maybe a hundred cc's or ninety cc's. So at she's a time. still filling. <laughs> I know it's yeah. Look up if, if you look up the episode. She's yeah. They're pretty. They're pretty. Incredible. Like Minka and uh, uh, what is her name? Chrissy, Christy, Chrissy. Anyway, there's a lot of them. I had um, back in the day when I first started my career, I had a best friend who was a photographer, videographer. Mm. So he, I had a house with a with a little house in the backyard, mm. and he lived in the backyard in the little house in the backyard, and we filmed all the time. And he was a massive boob lover. Uh huh. Okay, and I mean. He loved the, the ones that are like this big. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like uh, I was saying, Maxi Mounds was one. Exactly, who she so. he loved that. So he was a little bit um, in my head as far <laughs> as far as me going bigger. Yeah, um, because he absolutely loved them. He thought they were just the cat's meow. So they they are pretty wonderful. And I'll he told that. me he was the one who told me the doctors to go with and. Um, my options, Mm -hmm. you know, so I did this, I did this, um, expanders Mm -hmm. and I, unbeknownst to me, I caught something in the surgery. Okay. In the hospital. And, you know, that leads to a whole thing that I will only say you have to prove that they did something wrong to Mm -hmm. actually have anybody care. care. (laughs) Otherwise you're just on your own. Yeah. So here's what happened to me. That silicone was all in that capsule. They cut into me and implanted the new implants. Mm. And inside the capsule was the bacteria. Oh. It got trapped inside there. Okay. So I did tons of tests. I had, what happened is I had right here, I had this red rash. Mm -hmm. And it looked like maybe a fungal infection. Oh, okay. But nobody could tell what it was. Nobody could tell what it was. That's always nice. I had blood tests. I sold my Audi to afford all these treatments because nobody could tell me what I had. Mm -hmm. I was close to getting them removed. Mm -hmm. Just saying, I'm done with boobs. I'm, it's obviously I have, you know, because you can have silicone poisoning and not have silicone boobs. Oh, wow. Because the actual sac is silicone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) So the ca- the casing. Right. Yeah. Exactly. The balloon. <laughs> so nobody knew what I had. I, I was I went to a doctor here in Vegas and I'm like, just take them. Mm-hmm. I'm done. I, I, I just want to be done with this. It was painful. Probably every two minutes I would get what felt like a little electrical shock. And I would just go like that. And it would oh, be really? like, oh my God. Wow. And I dealt with this for like maybe three or four months. Mm-hmm. And I got by, oddly enough. I get off my surgery medication really fast. Mm -hmm. So I had all this pain med lying around and my daughter was like, you better half that mom, you know, because you don't want to build a tolerance to it. So I would take half a pain pill in the morning and half a pain pill at night just Mm -hmm. to deal with this. something. Right. And I finally said, enough, just take them. And the doctor here was like, you have been everywhere and you've done all these treatments. Just, I, I need one solid file of everything you've done so he started contacting all these doctors right and he contacted the doctor who did the surgery Mm -hmm. and then that doctor was like what's going on (laughs) yeah and i'm like you remember how i sent you some pictures of some uh bacterial infection or something well it wasn't what you thought it was and i've been to the you know cdc i've been to you know all all these disease clinics and nobody could tell me Mm -hmm. what it was so I'm just having them removed. And he's like, get down here. He was in LA. So I said, okay. So a week later he had me in and I, and I looked at him in the face and I said, I don't care. I want all of it taken out and sent to a lab. Mm-hmm. That's on me. I'm paying for this. Right. Mm-hmm. I want the capsule taken too. He's like, no, I don't want to do that. They're, they'll be different. And I said, that's why I wanted you to do them both. Yeah. 
but you didn't want to do them both, okay? Mm. But for some reason, God, my angel, the devil, I don't know, somebody was telling me, take the capsule too. Mm -hmm. And that's how they found out. The capsule was full of silicone, Mm -hmm. and they found I had this bacteria infection, bacterial infection called light Klebsiella oxytosa, ingrained in my brain... I will never forget that name yeah. because I had to go on IV antibiotics. Wow. Which is a big deal. Mm-hmm. It's a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> to go on IV anti- antibiotics to kill this.